Anchors up, sells at full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. Doing all right. How are you doing today? You know what? I'm not going to complain. Uh, Kyle, we are recording this earlier in the day than we normally do, so uh, I will not be cracking a beer. I, I instead just it's it just it's just a flavored water. That's it. It's just a flavored water. We don't we don't typically drink at two o'clock. Not in this household. <laughs> But, you know, we had to keep the uh, new yet thriving uh, tradition of me cracking something open in, at the top of the podcast. All right. All right. It is another round of our mock class here. We're going to talk a good bit, talk again about the 2025 mock class here. What's recent trend? It's part three. Part three. It is, isn't it? Hey, Kyle, can you do me a favor? Because I totally forgot to do it. Maybe. I believe in the show notes. Uh, the last time we did a Building Blocks episode, we had the uh, mock in that class. Can you pull that up so we can compare and contrast what changed? Sure. Give me a moment here to pull this up here. So this was about a month ago here. Yeah, uh, I, got, I got it up. Oh, cool. Nope, nope, nope. That is not it. February 20, no, February 18s somewhere, I'm pretty sure. Not a ton. I will say not a ton has changed, although there are there have been some very important changes. And um, I think maybe before we get started, we should note in the 2026 class, and we're talking 2026 here for just just the, the briefest of moments. Um, Ohio State's primary target at the quarterback position has committed uh, to Georgia. Uh, I will say I am not super worried about that yet at this point. It's still very early in the process. Um, Ohio State has great relationships with um, other quarterbacks in that class. Uh, and quite frankly, I'm not I'm not ready to give up on on anyone this this early in the process especially for a 2026 kid um that being said ohio state's loaded at the quarterback position if you look at the two absolute studs that they brought in in 2024 and uh as i transition into the 2025 class the absolute stud and newly crowned five star that they have in this class switch screens i am of course Talking about Tavian St. Clair, um, Bell Fountain product uh, right here in Ohio. And like I said, recently got his recently got his fifth star. He's already committed. He's already in the class. I have absolutely zero concern uh, that he won't be in this class when all is said and done. You know, a year from now, he'll be in spring camp. I have I have no I have no hesitations about that. Yep. I agree. Nothing, nothing's changed there. And yeah, I, nothing's changed. I don't think we need to spend any more on the quarterback, on the quarterback position here, though. Uh, for the YouTube folks watching, I do have a visual on screen. We're going to be laying out the mock class um, just to help people keep track of this a little bit easier. So if you're listening on the podcast version and maybe all the names get to be a little too much for you, we do have a visual aid on the uh, podcast. Um, that being said as well, I will also be laying out not just who I am putting in the mock, but also some additional targets to keep an eye on what I call in our discord server, the shortlist. Um, and at the quarterback position, I, I have none. We, we we have no one in the shortlist at the quarterback position. We're we're all in on St. Clair. Yes, yes. Now the running back, running back's a little bit uh, different story here. Uh, definitely, there's about four or five names out here that have uh, been thrown around here. Uh, I I've re I've, uh, I really have it narrowed down to four personally. Yeah, last time that we talked, uh, we narrowed it down to two. Uh, in-state Bo Jackson and mm -hmm. a uh, Florida native, uh, Brian Lewis. Yes. Um, I have made a change here. Uh, I, I saw Bo Jackson in the class. I, I think it's a matter of time before he ends up committing to Ohio state. 
Uh, he of you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna give you four running back names here. This is the guy who you can whip out a pen and just go ahead and just go, just go ahead and write him in. I feel very good that eventually Ohio State, Bo Jackson are gonna come together and he's gonna be in the class and again he'll be in spring this time next year. Maybe I don't know if he's gonna graduate early or not, but you know what I'm saying. Now I have made a change, however, with the second running back in the mock. And admittedly, this might be a bit of me getting a little hesitant with a late season change in the uh, running back coaching room, you know, might be a little bit, you know, you might lose a little bit of traction recruiting the national kids. So, you know, I'm keeping, I'm keeping Byron Lewis, <laughs> Ohio State running back coach Ryan Day. Exactly. And by the way, once we see who Ohio State brings in to be the running back coach, I might totally change my mind on this. But as of right now, I'm going to play this a bit conservative. I'm going to take Byron Lewis out of the mock. Uh, he is still going to remain in the short list, however. Uh, and I'm going to add another Ohio in-state product, uh, Marquise Davis. Uh, to the mock instead. I think if Ohio State wanted to, they could just close up their running back class right now, go get Bo Jackson, go get Marquise Davis, and and call it a season on recruiting running backs. I think they could do that. And personally, I think they should do that. Uh, no disrespect to uh, Byron Lewis, uh, who, uh, as I said, is another guy who could very well be in this um, mock or uh, Jordan Davis, uh, who's the other guy who I have in the uh, the short list just outside the mock. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I like Bo Jackson, as you mentioned, Jared, Bo Jackson kind of just pencil him in there. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I squeeze in Marquise Davis here, another in-state person. Uh, I think not quite as obvious as Bo Jackson, you kind of pencil him in, but I think, I think Ohio State could easily uh, grab him, but I, I still like Brian Luce as a third. I, th I think Ohio State may go with three running backs here, but I, those are the three that I have right now is Jackson, Davis, and Lewis. It's interesting. I, I, I don't know if they, I don't, I don't know if it's in the plan to take three running backs right now, personally, but I, I could be wrong. Um, mm -hmm. Things change, obviously, uh, but I, I think there was a point in time in which they were looking at Jackson as like an athlete, but I really don't think that's. He's a running back at the end of the day, I think he's a running back, so I'm, I'm, I'm not quite as leaning towards that athlete designation with him as I would have been uh, even just a few months ago. Yeah, Austin brings up a good point. You're you're losing, you're losing three running backs this year. Could not, lose. Not many. Not not many. Yeah, not many in that running back room after this year. So I can I can see three. That, that's a really good point. All right, wide receivers. Wide receivers here. We already got. Uh, we already have uh, JV on Boggs already as a as a verbal commit to Ohio State here, and. Last time that we talked here, and honestly, um, I still kind of I think it's the same. I, I think it's the same here. It, you got you also add in uh, uh, Jamie Finch as well. French. It's two F's. F F. It's not. Yeah, but I'm pretty oh, sure it's it? still just spelled French. I pronounced French like. Okay, and uh, and Simmons Jr. Okay. All right, thanks for correcting me. Uh, and and Simmons Jr. as well. Those are the three that I have for, mm, interesting. for Ohio State. Yeah, uh, I, I have Boggs. I have French. Uh, I, however, have Vernell Brown as my third guy. I'm going with a trio of Florida kids at the wide receiver spot. Um, I, I do have Quinton Simmons in my shortlist. Um, I have actually quite a few wide receivers in the shortlist. Um <laughs> I think for me right now, Boggs is already committed. 
but you know, he's also a Florida skill based player. So committed is always a relative term. Of course. Um, I really like Jamie French. Um, I think he'll be in the class at the end of the day. And I have a few guys. And by the way, it could, it could also be four. I, I have a three person mock for the wide receivers right now. It could be four. It could be Brown and Simmons, but also like Edward Coleman, Kalik Lockett, Philip Bell, Quincy Porter, Decorian Moore, I, I think are all people to keep an eye on. None of these mm-hmm. people would shock me if they if they ended up in this in this class. I'm not saying that any of them in particular are super likely. I think um, Quinton Simmons, as Kyle points out, if you were to add a fourth or if you were to replace Vernell Brown, I think that is the person I would pick. So I, you know, I don't even disagree with Kyle. I I think Quinton Simmons, Vernell Brown, like eventually I decided I wanted three in the mock. Those are the three I went with, but like, I wouldn't be shocked if it was Simmons instead of Brown. I, I think it's a fair toss up at this point, quite frankly. Before the show, Austin asked me and he's asking you now, Jared, four and a half Florida kids in, in this, uh, in this class, four and a half kids. Uh, over under four and a half. Um, I will say in this mock right now, I have six in my mock today. That's doubling. That's double than what I have. So, (laughs) and I have an additional two players, no, three players in the short list from Florida. So this could be a Florida heavy class. that, That would be a heck of a, of a grab if they do get six kids from Florida. Uh, they're in real good with the wide receivers, and that's where I have a lot of. I mean, I literally just gave you three Fair wide point. receivers, uh, three wide receivers all from Florida. Yeah, yeah, yeah. SFE exactly. Uh, South Florida Express for anyone who doesn't know, uh, it's a seven on seven uh, scholarship factory. Quite frankly. All right. Uh, and- Tight ends. Is the next is the next one here. Uh, I think this is another situation where I have three kids for two spots. Sorry, you go ahead though. I was going to say my, I have I have the same people that we had last last time that we talked. Nate Roberts and Luca Gilbert. They yeah, get one out of state, one in state, and there's your there's your there's your tight ends for the class. Yeah. Um, Nate Roberts is from Oklahoma. I I feel like that's a matter of time pick, in my opinion. Um, and then Luca Gilbert, uh, incredibly talented in-state player. Uh, I think, as I was saying before, though, this is very much a three kids for two spots situation and potentially a situation where I wouldn't be shocked. Again, I say it's going to lose a ton of talent off of the team that they have right now. Um they, they just have a lot of players whose eligibility is is up. A lot of players will be using their fourth year this year. Um, so this could be a bigger than expected, uh, bigger than average recruiting class. So it, it could be three tight ends. Um, it could be four wide receivers. It could be three running backs. It just sort of depends. Um Brock shot is who I'm referring to. Uh, Brock shot is from Indiana. Indiana has a surprisingly strong class this year. Um, if it were Brock shot instead of Luca Gilbert, I, I, I wouldn't be shocked. Like it, that's totally plausible. Um, again, I, I wouldn't even say it's impossible that it's Roberts Gilbert and shot. It very well could be. But for right now, I'm going Nate Roberts and Luca Gilbert. Uh, I'm also uh, keeping Landon Pace on the short list. Um, but I think at this point, it's the three guys. I, I think it's Roberts, yeah. Gilbert, and, and Shot. All right. All right. Offensive line. It, big year. 
in my opinion, this uh, year with with uh, getting 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 it some really next, really good talent on the offensive line here. Ne- next year, twenty twenty six is. You might the 2026 class is so packed with offensive line talent within the state of Ohio. Yes, but also regionally. I'm not going to go into the whole thing, but like there's very good offensive linemen in and generally around like West Virginia has a great offensive tackle. Um, Point being. I wouldn't be surprised if this offensive line class was a tad bit on the smaller side in order to make room, in order to keep room for the 2026 class. You could very easily see that as a six person offensive line class for Ohio State in 2026. Uh, As a result, I think this could be a four, if not three person offensive line class this year. I am going to put four in the mock. Um, This class... Uh, I, 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 I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I, I think they need, I think that they get fourth. You already have uh Carter Lowe already committed to Ohio state. Uh, and he's, he's the big, he's the big fish. He's, he's the uh, big fish. yes. But I also think you need to have maybe not, not, not a, a big fish as well, but you need to have someone who's that, that next tier, that next tier who's, who can really contribute well. Um, also have Davenport um, in here and McFadden as well as an interior lineman, but need to get a fourth, um, a fourth tap. Uh, your fourth person needs to get a needs to be a tackle. I know there's interesting Sanders out there. There's Sanders out there. There's a uh, the boss, the uh, boss out there as well. Micah, too. Micah, the boss and uh, Michael uh, Fasusi as well. I think are three names to keep an eye out for. If you can get one of those guys. I, I really, really like this offensive line. Just need need to get a a second really good uh, tackle in this class. In my mock, I have Carter Lowe, who, as Kyle points out, is already in the recruiting class. Nolan Davenport, uh, a, another pro- Carter Lowe, absolutely a tackle. Uh, Davenport, in all likelihood, a tackle. Um, He's again from Ohio interior. You have Raphael green from Ohio. And then there, in my opinion, if they do get a fourth guy, which they probably will, but if they get a fourth guy, um, they will almost certainly go out of state to do it. Uh, Kyle mentioned, uh, Javian McFadden from Maryland. Um, there are, Guys like Micah DeBoss out of Alabama, uh, I'm, you know, hope for the best there, but I'm not, I, I don't think that's super likely. Um, Avery Gack from Michigan, I think if Michigan completely falls on their face this year, which I I do I think Michigan will fall on their face this year, I think it's a possibility that Ohio State gets Avery Gack out of the state of Michigan. Um Douglas Oto, uh, Oto or Utu um, is a guy who I think I've had in past mocks for Ohio State. Um, he's a tackle out of Las Vegas or Nevada, at least. I, I He's Nevada, at least. I forget where in, in Nevada. Um, there's a lot of good names who they have solid relationships with. Um, and of course, I have Maddie Aug- Augustine in the in the mock uh, out of Connecticut. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of guys who could be that fourth spot to me, what I think will happen. I think, you know, they have Carter Lowe in the class. They'll add Nolan Davenport. They'll add Raphael green. Um, and then it's just like, can you get like an absolute stud difference maker in that fourth spot? If you can't, I don't, I don't feel the need to fill it. I don't feel the need to fill that fourth spot. I think if you can get Matty Augustine, uh, if you can get Avery Gack, if you can get Micah DeBoss, then you go get that guy. Um, I, but I don't, I don't think they will or should add a fourth person, just add a fourth person because again, they, 
Ohio State's already lined up for an historic 2026 recruiting class. Austin says in the chat, this class is tricky, though, because the 2026 class sets up to be one of those best offensive line classes in Ohio State history. Yeah, it, it, it really is. It really does. And it really is. So mm-hmm. we'll see how it plays out, obviously. But don't get freaked out. Don't get all caught up in your feelings if Ohio State only adds three offensive linemen this cycle, because I think three is more likely than five, in my opinion, at this point. I, I think four is still probably most likely, but three is way more likely than five. And that's by design. All right, Kyle, before we... Oh, sorry, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I, I agree. I Definitely three more than five, but I I think four is the magic number. You can get that... You can get a I agree. Player, um, yeah, you can get that fourth player. That, that'd, be, that'd be really nice. Sanders and uh, Basusi are... Our wish are on that wish list. S- Sanders isn't going to happen. I know neither, no, neither is Vasusi, but no, I don't have it, either of those guys fine. even on the short list at this point. If you can get if you can get Micah in there in that yeah. list, yeah, I feel I feel I would feel really really comfortable um, with the offensive line moving forward. But before we go into the defensive side, we're going to take a quick ad break here. Uh, if you don't want to don't want to hear these as a uh, Become a patron over at discord.thesloopcast.com. Patreon.thesloopcast.com. And also, and at (laughs) patreon.thesloopcast.com. And join the Discord server at discord.thesloopcast.com. All right, we're going to start that ad break now. All right, we're back from the ad break and or awkward silence. One of those two things just happened to you, depending upon where you are watching or listening to this. Um, right. Let's switch defensive side here, Jared, to the defense. Defense. There is a defense. Yes. I, I, I struggle with the defensive line here. Just trying to figure out where this, where we see this defensive line come, come January or December and December of this year, January of next year where this defensive line is going to look. It's just, yeah. I mean, I mean, we already have Zaheer Mathis already uh, verbal commit. Yep. Um, on the defensive end side here, I, I think this is going to be a two, I think two uh, player class here on the defensive end. I think, Ooh. I think you look no further than in-state uh, Justin Hill to fill in that second spot here. But I know there's a lot of, a lot of push, a lot of talk about London Merritt as a possibility in there too. Um, yeah, but I have for there's another right Florida now, kid for you, Austin. Hill. Uh, so I'll, I'll say this: what we don't know right now is exactly what Ohio State's defense is looking for in regards to defensive linemen. There has been a lot of talk about bare fronts and three fours and five twos and and three threes. And we're not 100 percent sure at this point what Ohio State's looking at. Uh, so I'll, I'll say this. Who is a defensive end and who is a defensive tackle? And quite frankly, who is a linebacker? <laughs> it's starting to get a little muddy. So when when you say you only have two defensive ends, I think it might depend upon who we're counting as a defensive end. In my mock, I have Zaheer Mathis already committed, already in the class. Um, I have Justin Hill, who is currently being recruited by uh, James Laurinaitis in the linebacking staff. Although I do believe he ends up at defensive end. Um, I have London Merritt, uh, a kid from Georgia, uh, currently going to IMG. And I have, uh, Marion Dye, another great player out of the state of Indiana this year. Again, Indiana, surprisingly, uh, talent rich this high school season. Um, now someone might be looking at that. And sorry, what'd you say, Kyle? 
I said compared to previous years. Yeah, they, they, well, they by to... by India by Indiana standards is 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 the unspoken mm-hmm. part there. Um, oh, I mean, I have I have a, an additional uh, Damien uh, Shank, Shanklin um, in the short list from Indiana as well, who could very easily end up in this class. Well, Damien Damien is looking really really good towards Notre Dame right now. Yeah, he is. That, that'd be that'd be great. That'd be great. Which is why he's not in the mock. Come to Ohio State. <laughs> But but th- this is more of a uh, this is more of a me saying that Indiana is in fact very talented this year as a recruiting state. Um, yeah. But yeah, I agree. Shanklin, unless things change, does look to be a Notre Dame kid at the moment, which is why he's on the short list and not in the mock. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, someone might look at Marion Die as a three tech defensive tackle and not a defensive end. It just kind of. It's it's all getting a little fuzzy as far as who is where right now. But for right now, for the sake of this mock, I have four defensive ends, Mathis, Hill, Merritt, and Die. Um, in the short list, um, I have from um from Maryland, uh Darian Smith, uh Maxwell Roy, who is from Pennsylvania. And another Maryland prospect in Trent Wilson. Excuse me. Those are those. I was say the, I think you got those backwards. Those are. Those I have those. I have. I have those backwards. Yes, well, those are defensive. defensive. This is why I kept. This is why I kept hesitating. I'm like, wait a minute. This isn't right. I have my. I have my defensive ends and my defensive tackles and my defensive tackles and my defensive ends. Um, let me just correct go. the graphic real quick. Um, at defensive end on the short list, I have Damian Shanklin. Um, Javon Hilson, uh, Javon Hilson is another Florida prospect and Cedric works, uh, from the state of Ohio. Okay. Let's talk about the, uh, defensive tackles actually in the mock, since we've already talked about the defensive tackles in the short list. Yeah. I mean, you look no further than in state Brandon Caesar. I think we yeah. mentioned him uh, the last time we talked about it. Another name I have in here is Landon Rink. I've got Landon Rink in here as well. Mm-hmm. But I think on the outside here that I'd be really wishful thinking here, as you already have, you have I, him I think here is, uh, is Trent Wilson. I think yeah. getting Trent Wilson would be a big get here. But I have Caesar and, Car- and uh, Rink right now as my two defensive linemen. I don't even have Rink in my in my – Short list. I am I wrong? Do you know something I don't know? Am I wrong? As we like like to say every year, Jared, it is early in the recruiting season. It is. It's 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 early in the cycle still. Obviously, no. It just I'm surprised you have someone in the mock who I don't even have in the short list, and I don't know. Like one of us is wrong. I guess is my. <laughs> or both. Or we're both wrong. Well, in this specific, okay, we're both definitely wrong, but specifically in regards to rank, one of us is very wrong because I should at least, well, if you have them in the mock, I should at least have them in the short list. Um, Landon, Landon Rink's out of uh, Cypress, Texas. Uh, definitely a, not highly rated currently right now, but a lot of, lot of buzz with him. Uh, has, has, some, has some okay size, um, but yeah, I think... I think he's, I think he's a, I think there's a lot of potential with him and sure. hearing a lot of, bu- hearing a lot of buzz, uh, around him. So I've, I've I put rink in, in, in our third, uh, mock class here. Okay. Um, I already mentioned Darian Smith, Maxwell Roy and Trent Wilson as my three defensive tackles on the short list. All right. Uh, Linebackers. I think Ohio State is in very good position right now with linebackers. Um, Yes. Keeping this list to three, which is what I decided to do, um, was fairly difficult. I will once again point out um, that Justin Hill is currently being recruited by the linebacking staff. Um. If Ohio State is maybe moving into more of a three, four 
five, two, three, three, whatever stance, then a dedicated edge rusher, which is what Justin Hill is, um, does start to look more like a linebacker than a defensive end. Uh, but again, for the sake of this mock, I'm, I'm keeping him in with the defensive ends and we'll look at three linebackers. Um, Eli Lee, who's already committed, uh, TJ Alford. That's another Florida kid for you, Austin and Madden Ferriamo, uh, Ferremo, excuse me, Madden Ferremo. Um, that would be, that'd be who is huge. from that'd California. Huge get. Yeah. That'd be a huge. Get. Not just from California though. Not just from California. Yeah, I know. I did the thing. Could he be, could he be the guy that finally breaks the curse for Ohio state and actually get a kid out of that high school from martyr day? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Listen, the kids from martyr day, they always put the football down and they always swear they aren't going to pull it out the last second before I kick it. And they always pull out the football the last second before I kick it. Have I learned my lesson? No, I haven't. And if nothing else, we do have a, uh, we do have a mole on the inside for Mater Day mm -hmm. right now, as Austin points out in the chat, uh, Chris Henry Jr. feels like he shouldn't count, but will technically break the curse. But he could, he could not, he could just not, Break the curse, but also be a bit of a spy on the inside and and maybe help break that curse a year early. Yeah. Um, should be pointed should be pointed out that this is not the only uh, Mater Day prospect we have talked about today. Uh, Jordan Davis, the running back from California, uh, also Mater Day. Um, I didn't. I don't have him in the list. I don't have him in the mock. I've I've never had him in the mock. Uh, I've I've always leaned more towards Byron Lewis as the um, national prospect. Uh, I've most of my mocks to this point has had one Ohio prospect and one national prospect, and this time I changed it up and did two Ohio prospects. But that second prospect is for me has always been Byron Lewis because I, I just don't trust the Mater Day kids at, at the moment. Um, they, they, yeah. they, they have just not landed here ever, <laughs> despite being so close so many times. And then I turn around and I put Madden Ferry on um, uh, for Ramo. I turn around and put Madden for Ramo in the class. Once again, hoping that the, Football doesn't get pulled away from me at the last second. Yeah. Yeah. I have, I have Lee, I have Lee and, uh, Faremo, uh, in my, in my block here. I'll go. Do you also have TJ Alford? You already, you already pointed a lot in there. So I just have those two. Uh, so just a two person linebacking class for you. Mm -hmm. yep, I just got two here. Interesting. Um, in the short list, oh, oh, nope. oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, linebacking yeah. short list. I, I mean, I, I think two would be weird because quite frankly, it's difficult for me not to put Elijah Mendez, uh, Mel Melendez, excuse me, forgot the L Elijah Melendez in the mock. I, I think he is an absolute possibility for Ohio state. Dante McClellan's an in-state prospect. Elijah Barnes from Texas, uh, Nasir, Nasir, Wyatt uh, from California, uh, I think are all we like relatively good prospects for Ohio State at this point. Um, if someone is in the short list, that is me saying I wouldn't be shocked if they ended up in the class. That That is what the short list is for me. It, I'm not saying, you know, and that might be a 10 percent chance. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But there's also guys in the short, you know, the short list is pretty, it might be a long shot, but keep an eye on, which is like a 10% chance. But in some cases it's like, I had to flip a coin between, you know, uh, you know, 
pick two guys who are really close. We were talking about the wide receivers between Quinton Simmons, um, uh, between Quinton Simmons and Vernell Brown, right? Yeah. But at the very least, if someone's in the short list, that means I wouldn't be shocked. All right, fair enough. Uh, corners, I don't think we need to really discuss corners. I think it's it's the three here. It's it's would be Sanchez and Offord, three who are already committed there. As I will just say. As as long as there's no movement or any yeah. potential uh, recommits, I I, th- I think I think that's that's your cornerback class right there. Don't need to add any more. I will say just keep an eye on Offord. That's all I'm going to say. Like maybe it's because he's from Alabama. Actually, a lot of it is Absolutely. because he's from Alabama. Um, it's I think if Alabama comes out and has a really good year this year. Um, and I also think LSU is in play. I think there, there are other schools still in play here. Um, I, I know Offord is in the class. He's committed. Just keep an eye on. Um, I'll also say this. And by the way, I have no I have no cornerbacks on the short list. I have no cornerbacks on the short list. I have these three. But there's a strong but here. Again, like we're talking about with like three tech defensive tackles versus, you know, strong side defensive ends or edge defensive ends versus edge linebackers. It's getting a little blurry between the positions. Yeah, as Austin says in the chat, depends on if you list the corners as safeties. Yeah, because if we take a look at the safeties I have in this class, I have at least two guys who many would consider cornerbacks. And it's honestly getting to the point where I'm wondering, should I even be differentiating between corners and safeties at this point? Because I'm not sure I should be, because that's just kind of how Ohio State is recruiting now. Yeah, those are the three that I have in mind as well. McNutt. Delane and Brew. Yeah. I have, I have those three as in my class here. Weirdly, so let's say offer decommits, right? Mm-hmm. But I have no one in the short list. So who do we replace them with? In my mind, probably Dorian Brew. At that point, you just sort of say, well, Dorian Brew's a is a corner. And then you go and you get a new safety from potentially the short list on safeties. You know, we have Mm -hmm. Cody Haddad, who's a, an incredibly talented, uh, in-state prospect. Um, I believe he's currently committed to Wisconsin. That doesn't mean a lot to me, quite frankly, the mothership calls the mothership calls. Um, they also, uh, Messiah DeLome out of Virginia. Um, Ohio State is in really good with five safeties right now. I like, again, sometimes if someone's on the short list, that just means I wouldn't be shocked. I I would be more than not shocked if Ohio State adds. I mean, I was going to say a fourth safety, but let's (laughs) a seventh seventh defensive back. Because, again, Brewer McNutt might be corners. We don't know at this point. So. Is it a fourth safety? Is it just a seventh defensive back? Think of it however you want to think of it. Uh, Whatever. But I think Ohio State is, one, they had an excellent um, crew of corners in the 2024 class. The guys who they already have locked down in the 2023 class are incredibly talented. Um I will say, as far as Dorian Brew's concerned, keep an eye on LSU. I think LSU's mm-hmm. real players there. Um, I think Trey McNutt for sure ends up a Buckeye. I think Delane for sh- I don't want to say for sure, but more likely than not ends up a Buckeye. And it's really hard for me to say that Cody Haddad doesn't or isn't almost certainly a Buckeye 
even though I don't have him in the mock, because that's just kind of, and even though he's committed to Wisconsin, but that's just kind of the vibe I get. Um, of all the people who I don't have in the mock, he's the one who I think is most likely to actually end up in the class is, is Cody Haddad. Um, yeah. I don't necessarily know how all of that shifts out. And again, it's getting very amoebic as far as positions on the defensive side of the ball right now. Um, but I tell you what, Kyle, what, what is always set in stone is uh, $3 a month or $32 a year to join the Patreon. Um, Patreon.thesloopcast.com. You can avoid ad breaks. You can get early access to episodes. You can join a Discord server and listen live to episodes, which is a premium feature within the Discord server. However, most of the Discord server is free. And if, which is what Austin's doing. Hi, Austin. Um, which is uh, a cool benefit, I think. Um, you can also, by the way, if you don't want to use Patreon, we recently introduced the ability to upgrade within Discord. There, there's it, it does cost slightly more money in Discord because Discord takes a bigger percentage. I forget. It's I think it's five dollars a month if you sign up directly through the Discord server. Um, it is cheaper through Patreon. We'd rather you use Patreon. We'd because I think we might make a few extra cents, but it's we're definitely not making two more dollars through the Discord. Discord takes a bigger chunk, therefore we charge more in Discord. Use the Patreon. Save some money, use the Patreon. Uh, and if you want to even save more than three, uh, if $3 a month still sounds like it's too much to you and you want to save even more, uh, you can uh, sign up uh, for an entire year up front and uh, save, I think it's like 12% by doing that. So you basically like, pay for 11 months and get the 12th month free essentially uh and all that can be done at patreon.thesloopcast.com uh here is that ad break now okay Kyle. we are back from the ad break um you look at you you have your mock class and you you look at my mock class um where where would you say do you have like a definitive opinion? Like, where do you think I am wrong? Like if you could change like definitively, like stand up, pound the table, fight for your opinion. I don't, I, I think it's the offensive line side. I know we, we spent a good amount of time on the offensive line there. I, th I think that's, we, by the way, we should spend, it's where Ohio state has been. Ohio state's recruiting has been the weakest over the past few years, we should spend time on the offensive line. Yeah, it's, I know, I know we're disagreeing. I, you, and rightfully so there's um, like the 2026 class is loaded with a lot of, a lot of talent on the offensive line side, but you get, you got to get good players in every year on that offensive line. And we've seen if you, if you don't have a good offensive line, um, in one of your classes and then all of a sudden it's like, Oh, a lot of these players the year before or the year after don't pan out as well. We're going to be in a class. It's going to be in a really tough place to try to find someone in the portal that can be plug and play and how state had that. You don't find them that often. How state has, has only had like what one really good portal that's come in and did really well. Um, I think that I think that might depend upon your opinion of of Josh Simmons. Um, I know you're talking, well, technically born transferred from Michigan. So, yeah, the eldest yeah, born did transfer from Michigan. So um, I know you're talking about and his name is escaping me uh, from the interior guy from Rutgers is who I assume you're talking about when you say one. Um. Yeah, it, transferring in, and, and by the way, I, I think, I think, uh, I think McCullough is going to be good this year. I do think, in my opinion, he ends up winning. Yes, Jonah, 
Jonah Jackson. Um, I do think McCullough ends up winning the center job this year. That's just an opinion. Um, I could be mistaken. Um, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. But again, if we look at. Yes, Austin McLaughlin. Yeah, yes. Yes, I didn't have his name in front of me. I, I reached. I missed. Uh, but yeah, the 2026 class, not only do you have in-state Will Conroy, Sam Greer, Maxwell Riley, um, Laundre Beattie, I, and like that could be your recruiting class right there. That could be your recruiting class right there of those four in-state guys. And that's a hell of a recruiting class. But now consider that they also have an incredibly like excellent relationship with Micah Smith, one of the best offensive tackles in the class from Florida. You have Deron Parks in West Virginia, just across the border. Uh, Jackson Cantwell in Missouri. Um, you know, uh, you have uh, Tyler Merrill just right across the border in Pennsylvania. Uh, you, you have Adam Gunthrie, another offensive tackle from Ohio, who, depending upon where he is at developmentally, if he, you know, takes a leap this year, uh, could also be of Ohio State quality. Um, the Ohio State has incredible prospects along the offensive line in 2026. I, I don't feel the need to load up on the offensive line again, go get studs, go get stars, go get future starters, but I don't think they should be taking depth players. Guys who they know are going to or develop depth players or developmental players in the 2025 class, because they're just going to get forced out by the 2026 guys. They're they're just going to get passed over and forced out by the 2026 guys. So, yeah, go go get Carter Lowe for sure. Go get Nolan Davenport for sure. You know, and if you can land, you know, Raphael Green in the interior, go get him for sure. And then if you can add a stud from outside the state on top of that, for sure, go do that. But now is not the time to go get, again, a developmental player who's, you know, outside the top 500 overall recruits in the country. It's just it's not it's not the season to do that. Uh, anything else, Jared? I, I think that about covers it right now. It's still so really early in the recruiting class here. I think I think this would be a very very solid class here if Ohio State was. Ex this would be an excellent class. Yeah, I. Yeah, it'll be. Obviously, next time that we talk to talk about this, I'm, I'm gonna look at our schedule. I don't I don't think we're gonna be talking about this for, for a little while. Maybe about, about two months from now. I think we'll 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 recap again um, with any changes and updates here maybe end of may beginning of june we'll, we'll get back to here talk about this again here and see who's moved off and see who's moved on from our list here yeah with uh with spring football off yep. and running and that's, yep and that's all that we're going to be talking about for that next month here we're going to going to get right back into spring camp here a lot a lot of news a lot of a lot of great things that we're hearing in camp here um Actually, a lot, a lot of um, good information that came out today, Jared, from their first uh, private scrimmage here. A lot of, a lot of great things. Uh, if you haven't joined the uh, Buckeye Huddle right now, I advise you to do that. A lot of great information that um, the gang in there is uh, posting. Um, but yeah, really excited, really excited stuff, and we will get everybody caught up here in the next uh, few episodes here. Yeah, um, stay tuned to the Buckeye Sloopcast for sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm very excited for the spring game and I'm very excited to 
I, I'm just Ohio State has two question marks right now. Um, we don't know who the starting quarterback is, and we're very concerned about the offensive line still. Yep. I think the left side of the offensive line is fine and good. And running back coach in a way. Yeah. Um, Ohio State right now, as far as the running back coach search goes, and I'm not. So the two most important positions. Yes, Spikes. Um, but by the way, that's why we're concerned. Like we we have just as many questions at the tight end position. We're just not as worried about it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I have just as many questions about who exactly the starting and the road, you know, who's going to be how many players and who are those players are going to be rotating in and out at wide receiver. That's also an interesting question. I just, there's so much talent there that I wouldn't call it a concern tight end. I feel like there's a lot of good talent. I don't know how much, I don't know if there's like any world beaters there, like, but I'm just I'm not that worried about it. The offensive line and the quarterback are the things that will stop Ohio state from winning the national championship this year. Yep. Yep. We are hearing some good things out of camp about the offensive line. It looks like the left side of the line is pretty set, which isn't a shock. We have two people battling out for the center position, which we, we knew we, we fully expected that. And we have three players, presumably three players fighting it out for two spots on the right side of the offensive line. Um, We'll see how that goes. You know, we have essentially three offensive tackles, all wanting to be the right tackle. And one of them will probably get moved to guard. But then again, maybe the loser at center gets moved out to guard. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Um, I mean, you could argue five for three. Um. I would say four for three if we just like count the oh I see what you I see what you're saying. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Um it's just it's different because like Meyer isn't going to win the center job, right? But Chibola Monty Fryer, I said Myers. Fryer, get, get, get your names right. Fuck yeah, I know, I know. Meyer, Fryer, Fryer, Meyer. Um, Fryer's not going to play center. Chibola's not going to play center. You know what I mean? So there's there's two separate battles. You have again, you have Hinsman and McLaughlin fighting it out for center. The loser of that job could move out to right guard. That's entirely possible. But for right now, I'm really viewing it as Fryer, Montgomery, and Chibola fighting it out for right tackle and also right guard. Meyer and, excuse me, I did it again. Fryer and Montgomery especially could slot into guard pretty easily. Chibola, he probably couldn't a pinch, but probably isn't, probably isn't the the best selection for, for guard. He's, he is more of a, like, straightforward tackle. So, you know, you have... Point is, is that there is open competition and there is depth. One of the big issues Ohio State had last year with the offensive line is that it had no depth. You had no one pushing anyone for time. If someone was struggling, you couldn't just pull them out and throw someone else in. There was no competition. It's just like, here are the five offensive linemen we have. Go. Go. And that's not the case now. And when starting positions aren't just handed to people, they tend to get better. Iron sharpens iron and all that, right? 
Um, so I think that's where we're at right now at the offensive line, even if it's not the best, which it's not, um, they're still in much better position as an offensive line group now than they were. I mean, I, I say a year from now, Simmons wasn't even on the team a year ago. Um, not a year from now, a year ago, wasn't even on, but even if Simmons was on the team, even if we count, you know, Ohio State's in better position along the offensive line right now than they were, you know, at the start of fall camp last year. And that says a lot. You know, it might not be, might not be the level we want it to be, but it will be much better than it was last year, uh, especially early in the season, in my opinion. Right. I, I think that's it. I think, I think we can go ahead and end it right there. Um, as I mentioned, there's, we'll, we'll, we'll cover this in about two months here. We'll check in for any updates here. Um, but yeah. Any, any last words, Jared? Um, TJ Alford linebacker who we mentioned is set to commit on March 30th. I think I forgot to mention March 30th. Yes. Um, yes. I, I like the good guys in that. I like the good guys. We'll see. We'll see. I'm sorry. Are you questioning my call of TJ? Did, did, didn't you have TJ Alford in your class? I did not. I I, I firmly disagree with you. All right. Well, I, I hope I'm wrong. Okay. <laughs> Well, Austin, what do you feel? He's he's a Florida kid. I'm going to give you last call on this. TJ Alford to Ohio State. He says he's a Buckeye. There you go. Right. The, the the Florida high school coach says that he's a Buckeye, so <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you, Kyle. All right. Uh, that's it. That's the end of the show. We already talked about uh, the Patreon. We already talked about the Discord server. If you'd like to buy some merchandise, Kyle, show everyone your lovely T-shirt uh, from is- the Sloopcast store. Um, it's, 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 uh, styled like the old crew logo, but it says the Buckeye Sloopcast. Isn't that fun? Uh, so you can find that t-shirt. You can find a bunch of other, um, Sloopcast merchandise at merch.thesloopcast.com. And you can also just find some stuff that is just generally celebrates Ohio, uh, but isn't like podcast merch, uh, at seven zero seven one. That's 77. Let me try that again. That's 7071, 7071, uh, dot the sloopcast.com. Uh, so you can support us, uh, using either of those methods as well. All right. Uh, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Uh, a pair of, uh, national champions here. Uh, Jesse Mendez is ANC AA championship in the 141 pound wrestling. And how about, and did you know, Jared, Ohio State is not a basketball school, not a football school. No. But a pistol school. They are a pistol P- school. Pistol and synchronized swimming. Yes. This, yeah. this is, this is, fourth, fourth, this is Ohio State. Fourth, consec- fourth consecutive national championship for the Ohio State pistol team. It will never, will never understand how the military academies don't win this. <laughs> Uh, they, and yes, and for anyone wondering, yes, they compete. The military academies like do compete in these events. By the way, there's Coast also Academy, there's Coast Guard Academy took third spot. <laughs> Guys, it's your whole deal. But there are flying competitions that the Air Force doesn't win. These are real facts. Like, I wouldn't expect the Navy to win rowing. Right? But how how is Army or Navy, because let's not forget the Marines, go to the Naval Academy. How did the Army and Navy not win pistol? 
How did how how is that possible? I don't know. I don't know. I need answers to these questions. All right, Kyle. Uh, anything else in Kyle's corner? Nope. That's it. That is All it. right. That's the end of the podcast. Uh, tonight's ending music. Uh, if you're new here, we don't actually play the music on the podcast version of the show because YouTube rules. We do play the music on the uh, audio only podcast feed. Uh, but if you uh, also the Navy, the Naval Academy did take second. Um. Pistol Team Awards, number one, Ohio State, number two, Navy, number three, Army West Point. A distant second. Uh, yeah, holy shit, that's a real distant second. I assume the second column is the actual points. Ohio State scored a yeah. 58. Ohio State scored a 58 and... Navy in second place scored a 37. Army in third scored a 35. Guys. Just saying. You want to be in Ohio when the shit hits the fan. That's all I'm saying. Um, or maybe you don't, depending upon. <laughs> all right, we're moving on. Moving on. We're good. We're good. We're going to end it. Right. And end it. Moving on. Um, Tonight's ending music, uh, again, if you, if you're watching the podcast version of this and you're like, where's the ending music? There is a link down in the show notes. Uh, you can click that and, and listen to the song. Uh, so uh, tonight's ending music is Old Hundred. The name of this band is Old Hundred. They are from Columbus. Um, so with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support local podcasters. Once again, this is Old Hundred. <laughs>